So this video is still on representation theory. Last video we were seeing the concept of complex inner product. We made a, a quick review on complex numbers and we introduced the concept of inner product on a vector space. So a inner product is V times V, okay, mapped into the complex where uh, you have these three properties. Please check the previous video for this. And we saw that a vector space with an inner product is a inner product space. So the, the notion of norm, the concept of a norm of a vector in an inner product space is given by the inner product. Okay, so it is given given this way. Okay, so in this video we introduced the concept of standard inner product on a complex uh, space, a complex n space. So the standard inner product is given by this inner product. So this would be a1, a2, an, b1, b2, bn. This is not very clear. Bn. We make a, a proper n here. Okay, so this is a B, Bn. Okay, so it will be the, the inner product between A1 to An to P1, Pn. Okay, given by the sum from i beginning in 1 till n of A i a conjugate of B i. Okay, so now that we have this concept of the standard inner product on a complex space, um, I we quickly uh, check two properties of the inner products. One is the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. Inequalities are so important that someone asked me and I might do one course on inequalities. We usually do only basic inequalities, but especially in analysis, inequalities are very important. I might someday do a couple of videos on this. So one of the properties is the so-called Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, where the norm Vw right, is smaller than the norm of V times the norm of W, and the triangle inequality, where the norm of V plus W is smaller than the norm of V plus the norm of W. Um, okay, uh, remember that these this, um, vectors, V and W, of course, if we are in uh, a inner product space V, they are said to be orthogonal or perpendicular orthogonal we always use the word orthogonal orthogonal if the inner product of v and w is zero okay so if you get a subset v prime a subset of v and this V prime will be called orthogonal if all the elements of this set are pairwise orthogonal. Now, if the, if the vectors are orthogonal and on the top of it the, <coughs> the norm of each vector is 1, like here is V and here is W, they are all one. They are called orthonormal. Okay. So the set is called auto orthonormal. Of course, if you have a a set, let us say B, V one, V two, V n. If they are all pairwise orthogonal and each one has norm 1, 
okay? They are called orthonormal. Um, another fact, if a if this set is a set of uh, orthogonal vectors, orthogonal vectors, they will be obviously linearly independent. And obviously, if the vectors are all orthonormal, they will all be linearly independent too.